Greetings, brethren of the one God, his one church throughout this world. I'm coming to you from a, a car park outside a church building, and I believe they have a prayer night tonight. So I'm sitting in the car park, and um, the Holy Spirit has reminded me of a before and after story of my life. And I've, I'm an ex marketing director from an advertising agency, um, basically in the 70s until the mid 80s. And when I was born again in 1984, my life changed radically. So God sorted things out overnight, literally overnight, five major things were sorted out in my life. And it was what we know as the born again experience. Once I was, now I am. So there's a distinct point in my life where I changed, but God changed me on the inside and he sorted things out which became visibly noticeable to my colleagues at work um, and then my conscience came alive and I was no longer really <clears throat> committed to my role in the company which was all to do with the money making as, lot, as much money as possible so that we could pay ourselves as directors as much as possible, including bonuses and expenses and nice cars and all of that. So we were there uh, to exploit our clients to make as much money as possible to reward ourselves. And that's what business is. So those who make the money are the ones who reward themselves and they pay the minimum that they can get away with to everybody else underneath them and that's the structure of business. So a director is earn, earning more money than a manager who earns more money than a supervisor and of course people who do the ordinary work at the lowest level they get paid the least. So before I became born again a follower of Christ, a disciple of Jesus Christ, 38 years ago. I remember just now a, a story. It's like a parable, but it was true. Before Jesus came into my life, before my conscience came alive, we worked for clients. And if you like, in business, they were like cash cows, and you milk the cow for as much milk as you can get from the cow. And that is what business is about. Now, I'm not talking about the church, the business of running a church. I'm talking about worldly commercial businesses selling services. So I'm talking about the world. I'm not talking about the church selling services. I'm talking about the world selling services. So we were a service agency, an advertising agency service agency, marketing, public relations, print, TV, radio, the whole bit, full service advertising agency. If a client said, could you do this? The answer was, yes, we can. And if we couldn't do it ourselves, we would buy in the services, subcontractors, and of course, you know how that works. We then put a mark up profit on top of the uh, subcontractor's rate and then we earned at every level of the process. <clears throat> we added profit to it and we earned profit. And that's what business is. And business itself, um, that's the way the world runs. And in the, in the time of Jesus, it was the same. So there were publicans. There were innkeepers. There was a temple. There was a royal family, Herod. There was the occupying force of the enemy, the Romans. There was a structure, soldiers, um, obviously carpenters, shepherds, fishermen. Society was what it was, tax collectors. There were, there were always been tax collectors, it seems, people who are collecting money from others. And of course, that was the way of the world. When Jesus came into the world, he grew up 
in the world. And you might say Joseph, uh, the carpenter, had a business. Paul, the tent maker, had a business. So business is the normal life of society. So way, way back, hunter-gatherers, there were some who looked after the farming side of things. They grew things. They looked after the sheep. And there were others who were the hunters who went out and hunted for food. So business is business, and that is the spirit of this world. Everything is a business. But of course, you know where I'm going with this. Jesus Christ himself was not a businessman. Although he ran his life and his team of disciples, and he was very much the boss, the master, the teacher, the rabbi. But Christ's business was not about making money. It wasn't about selling his services to his disciples. It wasn't about buying their time. It wasn't about him teaching them, training them, and paying them to carry on his message after he knew he would, be, he would die, he knew he would be lifted up, he knew the destiny of his life, and of course he equipped his team with the truth of life. He opened their eyes to everything, one day at a time, three years. And then, of course, you know, the Holy Spirit was given to remind his team of everything that he had said to them, the Holy Spirit brought to his remembrance. So, the point of all of this, before I became born again, before I became a Christian, that's the term, Christian, but really we're talking about being born again in Christ to become a disciple and a follower of the way of Jesus Christ, the way of the Holy Spirit, the way back to the Father through Christ, one day at a time, going heavenwards. So before I knew all of this, 38 years ago, before I was saved by the blood of the Lamb, I was a very unscrupulous, crooked businessman. And I would, I was, in, in all of the agency, I, it was the, I was the one who took the role of making as much money as possible, exploiting the poor so that we could become rich. And that's the spirit of this world, exploiting the poor so the rich become richer and the poor become poorer. Now, I'm not proud of that. I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed of it. <clears throat> it's part of my testimony. Once I was a crooked businessman, now I am different. I'm not even sure if I loved money. I spent money like water. Money didn't really mean much to me. It, it, it was a means to an end. It got me bit bigger and better houses, lifestyle improved, cars improved, etc., etc., etc. So the story I remembered, a client came to us, a big client in Britain at that time in the, in the 80s. So this was the early 80s before I was saved, before my conscience came alive. And this client approached us as an agency and they said the, the words to this effect, God, God is coming on Monday morning at 8 a.m., Monday morning, God is coming to our company in Norwich, UK. God is coming. Now, they didn't mean Jesus Christ. They meant the, the, the chairman of the holding company from up north, a huge company in Britain, who owned subdivisions, companies within companies within companies. 
So the head of the head office was coming and they called him God because he was the top man who owned everything beneath him. And for all we know, he was the majority shareholder in that huge international company and they were coming to a very small company in Norwich, UK, in the field of, let's just say, let's just call it food. So it was a food provision company. And they said, they came to the agency, it was like Wednesday afternoon. Could we come in for a chat? I and the team went in and they said, we've got God coming 8 a.m. on Monday. Could you as an agency help us produce all our accounts, graphs, um, assessment, profit and loss, uh, all our products have to be reviewed. Could you as an agency produce six documents, six documents for seven o'clock Monday, have it in our hands at seven because he's coming at eight. And he, they've been told that God has said, if you're not ready, then God would fire the the top people in that local company and replace them. And it was very much the fear of God, the man who was coming from head office. And they asked us, they were panicking, and they said, money's no object. We must have this done. Can you do it? And my company chairman looked at me because it was down to me to produce all the stuff within the next so many days. And I looked at him and I wasn't a Christian. I didn't have the Holy Spirit, but I knew that we could do it if money was no object. And I, I said, I believe we can. I'll get back to the office. I'll make a few phone calls. I'll line a few people up. And I'm sure we can help. But as, as you said, it's going to cost. Double time, travel time, working the weekend, getting the printers ready, artwork, the whole bit. Getting a team of people. And if we say, like, I don't know, 20 people are involved in producing these documents... It was only six documents, and each document was the same got document. So one document had, say, 100 pages in, printed off six copies. So big print machines had to be booked for the weekend. Sunday working, obviously. All expenses paid. Double rate. And suffice to say, for six documents... Basically, if you like, six sets of photocopies, printed photocopies, it costs thousands of pounds. I mean, thousands of pounds. So I'm thinking it probably maybe 12,000 pounds for six documents. So it's 2,000 pounds per document. And 12,000 pounds in the early 80s, we're probably talking... 50, 60,000 pounds today's value, pounds, UK pounds. But it had to happen. And companies would pay anything just to keep their jobs. And of course, they kept their jobs because the man they called God came from head office to their small little company within this huge organisation and they had to please God. They had to give account for themselves of what they've done with the money that came to them from head office to keep this business going. And of course they survived because their God, the man from head office, was impressed with the way they just turned it all around and, and got it done that phrase the world uses. Let's get it done. 
money's no object. But that is the spirit of the world. Now, I'm not talking about how the church has to be better than the world at doing what the world does. I'm not talking about that at all. When Jesus came to this world, he didn't set up a business. He helped his father. He was known as the carpenter's son. And of course, he served his father. His father was a carpenter, an honourable, working-class profession, if you like, artisan. If Jesus' father was a fisherman, Jesus would have been on the boats fishing. If Jesus' father was a shepherd, Jesus would have been there in the team of shepherds looking after the sheep. But we know the story, of course, Joseph was a carpenter. The spirit of this world is not the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is not the spirit of this world. Then you start to understand when Jesus came to bring in his kingdom, that here was the king of Israel. Did people recognize him as a king? They got to know this carpenter's son was a rabbi. But who taught him? Which school did he go to? What degree did he have? Where does he get his knowledge and wisdom from? At 12 years old, we know that Jesus was about his father's business in the temple of Jerusalem and Joseph and Mary, on the way back to Nazareth, realized Jesus was not with them in the party going back to Nazareth and they came and looked for him in Jerusalem three days later they find him in the temple of Jerusalem talking with the teachers of law the Pharisees the rabbis he's 12 years old and they are so amazed at his questioning and his answers he's 12 years old where does this child get all this wisdom and knowledge from at 12 years old. Well, we know. Jesus knew who he was. He said to Joseph and Mary, did you not know I would be in my father's house about my father's business? This is the Spirit of Christ in us. Born again, filled with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, living one day of salvation at a time according to the will of the Father. And each one of us who are alive to God today, because of Christ, because of the blood of the Lamb, we can come to God the Father and talk to him. Our eternal Father. Our real Father. We're not talking about the Father of religion. We're not talking about the man in the head office. We're talking about God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, who is above all of us. We're talking about the creator of the universe, the creator of me, my life, my spirit, in my body, the one who made me before I came into this world, the one who formed me before I was formed in my mother's womb. We're talking about the creator the God who made us human spirit to go into a human soul in a human body. And after we leave this human body, when this tent wears out, where do we go? We go back to God, the creator. We go back to heaven because of Christ, the blood of the Lamb. There's only one way to the Father, John 14, 6, through Christ and by the blood and through repentance and a turning away from sin, a constant turning away from sin, constant. Pray without ceasing, turn away from sin, resist the devil, he will flee, 
resist the tempters. I've talked enough. I'm just going to close with this. And you've, if you review my Facebook for the last many years, if you review my previous YouTube videos, you'll see that this is a progression of understanding about who I am, why I'm here, and what I'm telling you is how the Lord has led me. 38 years on this journey. And there's a learning curve. When you join any company, you start at the bottom, you work your way up, and then you arrive at the top. But in Christ's kingdom, Christ is the top. Christ is the king. And we're not in some career structure working our way up the Christian career ladder to get to the top position of being the manager above managers, above managers, above managers. We're not trying to set up our Christian companies. We're not trying to do it for God. But the Spirit of God is in us to use us to help others. And it's a learning curve. And arguably, only when you retire from work do you really start to understand it's never been about the work. It's never been about making your contributions for your pension. Although it's very nice, isn't it, to have a pension that you've worked all your life and you've, you've survived to retire and now the money comes in because it's a pension. It's like insurance. You put all the insurance money there and you live to enjoy the benefit of all that insurance, all the national insurance, the pension contributions, they all come back to you. And you live. And then you look at young people knocking themselves out, trying to understand why they're here, what's their purpose, what am I on this planet for? And you want to tell them. You're on a treadmill. You'll be on your treadmill for a long time until you realise that Jesus wants to set you free. He doesn't want you to be on a treadmill. The joy of the Lord is our strength. But when you let Jesus in, I mean really, humble yourself and submit to him, repent of your sins and say, Lord, I need your help. I've been going wrong so long. I, 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 I want to change. I want to be changed. I want to be born again. I want a new start. Bear in mind that Jesus called the disciples. He called Peter to put down his nets. Stop being a fisherman, Peter. Put down your nets for the physical fish. I will make you a fisher of men. And three years later, Peter denied Christ, denied the knowledge of Christ, went back to his fishing. But Jesus, we know, came back and reinstated Peter, forgave him three times for his three-time betrayal. And Peter was restored back into the fellowship with God and spent the rest of his life obeying Christ. Father, I thank you for those people out there who you know as your children, that you are continuing to gather them in. Like a mother hen, Jesus, like a mother hen, gathering in chicks, humble chicks. In other words, lambs. Not just sheep, but lambs. And Lord, I'm not talking about the natural, that lambs grow into sheep. I'm talking about humility. Lord, you've told us so clearly to humble ourselves to you as God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, 
And we are led like sheep for the slaughter, lambs before wolves. But you're the shepherd, Jesus. You are beyond all our understanding of how even the world runs its business with a hierarchy, with one man at the top, two or three under him, and then a pyramid of power, a hierarchy. But Jesus, you came to set us free from every spirit of this world, not just the evil spirits, but the human spirits of the kings like Herod, the governors like Pilate, the Pharisee chief priests, that you, Jesus, have set us free and are setting us free continually from the spirits of this world, from the God of this age, from the way this world is run according to the pattern of this world the God of this age and the pattern of this world. We thank you, Lord God, Holy Spirit, that you are changing us, transforming us, conforming us to the likeness of Christ so that we no longer think according to the pattern of this world, that we are led by the Holy Spirit to be servants of our living God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Father, bless those who are listening and hearing. They're hearing what the Spirit is saying. Today is the day of salvation. Man is destined to be born once and die and face judgment. It is for us, my siblings in Christ, to tell whosoever the good news, Jesus saved me, he can save you. And the words of your testimony about Christ and salvation, the blood of the Lamb, that has power to bring change to them. Sow the seeds of truth, the good seeds that Christ gives you. And just keep telling them the truth, the truth in love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. The word of God goes forth, never returns void. Jesus Christ is always accomplishing his purpose to bring salvation to you, to bring change, transformation, New wineskins are receiving new wine. We are alive tomorrow by the grace of God, the mercy of God. Mercies are new every morning. If God wakes you up in the morning, that day is a new day for you to serve God in spirit and truth and to be obedient servants, disciples, ambassadors of the King Jesus. Jesus is coming again. Only those of you who know him will be ready. It is for us to tell people the good news and prophesy and prophesy courageously and to warn those who are currently lost in the religiosity of what's supposed to be Christianity, but it's just churchianity. It's just the it's just a religious a religious experience for people. Soulish, religious, but not Christ. Not Christ. Not the Holy Spirit. Do not fear man. Man is mortal. Like grass, he withers and dies away. I'm talking about the men who are running Christianity, religious Christianity. I'm not even talking about the women 
who are ascending into places of leadership and authority. The spirit of the living God is our God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he will guide you into all truths in love. Let's leave it there. Brethren of the one God, my one siblings in Christ, throughout this family of God, throughout this world, there's one Father over all, Ephesians 4 and 5. One Father God over all of us. One Jesus, one Holy Spirit, one faith, one baptism, one bread, one loaf, one church, not an organization. We don't register the Holy Spirit. We don't register the body of Christ. We don't register God the Father. God is God, way above all of the worldly companies and organizations. God, big G. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Seventh of July, twenty twenty two. John Hammond coming to you from Norwich, UK. We'll talk again by the grace of God. God bless you.